I oh we're recording. I was supposed to be <laughs> I was supposed to be in bed by now because my friend and I this is gonna be hard to explain, but essentially I saw a TikTok a TikTok where that girl was inspired by different TikTok and that was inspired by a different creators TikTok type of situation that like this is by no means my original idea, but I sent it to my friend and was like, is this the thing that we should do? So now we're doing something that is called Delusion Week. Oh. In which we... That's just my normal state of being. <laughs> yeah. Well, this week, it's kind of awful um, in that no. we are... I can't remember how the original creator put it, but essentially deluding ourselves into thinking that we are already like the hottest healthiest oh, most successful versions yeah, of ourselves I try. so it's like a week where you act like you're already yeah i get you like a, a bad bitch if you will yeah and so we wrote like little lists of like i mean we didn't go crazy mm -hmm. there were things that we were already working towards but like a little list of like i have to be up by i did eight and that wasn't enough time for me yeah. So tomorrow we're going to try 7.30 and, like, eat at least one vegetable with every meal and do 30 minutes of cardio. Like, things that we have to do every day and, like, we'll film to document that we have done the things. It is fun. However, I said that I would be in bed by 10 and then, like, <laughs> reading and, like, no phone until oh, I yeah. go to sleep. hot girl shit, yeah. Hot girl shit, yes. Mm. Unfortunately, it is 10.04 <laughs> p.m. And we have been talking for two hours without even recording. It ha it happens so much so often. <laughs> I just had to complain about things, and then we complained about things for two hours. Mm -hmm. And like, we'll we'll like we'll have a story that we're telling each other, and then we're like, we should be recording, and then we just don't. Mm -hmm. And then we it's like a half hour later, and then we're like, maybe we should. Mm -hmm. And then, but you like, you don't want to re like record it all again. It's just a whole thing. And then you end up um, on different tangents. Yeah. Well, knowing us, I mean, so many tangents. <laughs> so easy um yeah i have delusions of grandeur all the time and that to me is being like oh yeah i will wake up and go get myself a donut mm -hmm. um and that doesn't happen mm -hmm. um yeah i would i would love to trick myself into being a morning person oh, um i like the past week i think i've just been so exhausted that i've fallen asleep early and like it's easier to get up but like i still don't want to do anything besides be on my phone you know mm -hmm. like I'll wake up at a reasonable time, but by the time I get out of bed, mm. it's rather unreasonable for a hot girl, you know? Mm -hmm. It's more of like, <laughs> I don't know, a moderately my, my interesting. Like delusion week goal yeah. was be physically, not just awake, but like be physically out of bed by 8 a.m., preferably yeah, 7 30. And it didn't work today. I didn't get out of bed until like 8 10. Yeah. But even that, that's, <laughs> that's earlier than I normally yeah. do. Well, and just like, if I do that on like a weekend, I'll end up like trying to sneak in a little cat nap. And then I just oh, I'll get like That's how I ended up sleeping oh, for the entirety yeah. of Saturday. That's what you said. It's bad. And then you wake up and you're so discombobulated. Like I'll have the worst dreams in naps. Like I'll be yeah. getting murdered <laughs> like in my nap and I'll wake up like, oh my God. Like everything bad in my life is just happening in that dream and then it and my mouth is dry. It's a whole well, the worst is when you, like, sleep for way longer than you intended and you know you're not going to be able to go to sleep yep. now. Mm -hmm. I Like, on Saturday – actually, Saturday was just all around <laughs> bad. I, like, slept in. I eventually got up. I was so tired to the point where my friends FaceTimed me. And <laughs> when I answered, they were like, oh, my God, are you okay? Did I just wake you up? And I was like, no. <laughs> I'm just tired. So we, like, <laughs> ate our breakfast. And then I accidentally fell asleep for – good lord like six hours or something i woke up i was like oh no i'm not gonna be able to go to bed but on the plus side i'll get some reading done yeah. but i woke up with a headache a dehydration headache because i hadn't drunk water uh because uh, i had been asleep headaches are such ugly bitches i hate so them. i chugged some water and then i took uh some painkillers and then i was reading this is important i was reading all the right notes by dominic Lim, which is a forever romance that comes out in june it's a queer Filipino and Japanese American male male musical theater kid romance. Mm. He's a composer or aspiring composer, and the other guy's a um, action star. But they're like childhood Ooh. friends. Anyway, uh, but the point is, <laughs> the thing about this book is that at the end, I 
I've been saying that it made me cry myself sick, but that's not entirely true because the thing is, I was reading it with a dehydration headache, so oh, no. already I was dehydrated oh. and my head hurt, and then oh. I was sobbing for many chapters, oh. well not many, but several chapters yeah. at the end, so I cried all the remaining yeah. water out of my body, and oh. then I became violently, no- okay, not violently, but very nauseous, yeah. so I was like popping those nausea and chew things, trying to power oh. my way through the last bit of this book because it was so good but like i sobbed uh, myself sick um this is my recommendation <laughs> it will cause you physical pain it did it did murder my peace um <laughs> standard caveat that i work for forever but like uh it, it did make me very ill and then finally i finished and was like okay well now i'm sick and i was so tired that i read a little bit of an audiobook and then all of a sudden, I guess the medicine kicked in and I felt fine. And then I fell asleep at 2 a.m. I was so tired that I slept for like six hours during the day and then fell asleep at 2 a.m. and slept through the night. I mean, honestly, that that's truly hot girl shit. That, <laughs> that's like your own level of like <laughs> species at that point. Like you've True hot plane. girl shit is sleeping <laughs> for like 16 hours Ugh. or something. I... It's gotten to the point where I just cry all the time at books now. And so I had to get, like, under eye patches and, like, eye cream because, like, I just feel, like, so freaking salty. Um, But there was one. Salty it was Hannah Reads. <laughs> salty Hannah Reads, the collaboration you never know you wanted. Um, it, It's Lorraine He's um, the Beast one. And I was in the bathroom and I'm one of those girls who's like, wow, I'm so pretty when I cry because my eyes um, because like the red um, enhances the green. So I'm like, whoa, (laughs) I'm so hot. But I was like sobbing into my towel on my shower. I was just like standing like I don't know what that book did to me. I was like on the ground. It was just so uh, her epilogues, guys, they they do things to me that are unholy. Um, And yeah. And then I had like a headache for the rest of the night. I was like unwell (laughs) i'm like this is so unfair that doesn't (laughs) tend to happen to me with books as at least not with romance novels as much you know what does it for me that i recently rediscovered what there's a certain brand of country music (laughs) (laughs) now where i was expecting you to go no one does but like okay okay so i live in texas obviously but Mm -hmm. my parents always they they just listen to country music and Mm -hmm. so there is a specific brand of country music that like anything was on the the radio channel kj97 in like the early 2000s because Mm. that was the radio channel that was on in the car and that those were the years when i was being driven around that like i now have a playlist that I, because yeah. I was, you know, country music wasn't cool because we live in Texas. Um, so once you're a teenager, cool. unless you're a hick, you don't yeah. listen to country music. Ew. Yeah. Maturity is coming back to that and realizing that actually country music is good, but only if you know what kind of country music to listen to. I love to. classic country. I love it. Anything, so much. honestly, most things pre like, I don't know, 2013 or something, like pre the um writing. Someone like a back row, body like a back row. Oh, I don't know. I know that one. Oh, he's like, I got my bar. She's got a body like my back row. I'm like, moguls? Right, well, <laughs> I don't want that. Anything that's like danceable yeah. country, I mean, da- like club country music, that's not what I want. Mm-hmm. With, with a few notable exceptions, there sometimes I will hear a modern country song. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? That's actually kind of fun. Or it'll be like spun with hip hop. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I like that. But most of the time, it's older. Like yeah. George Strait. Oh, George Anything Strait. Anything that was can like fuck peak. me up. No, I fucking love George Strait. Yeah. George Strait makes yeah. me weep. Yeah. Um, anything oh, that's God. like early Carrie Underwood mm-hmm. era. Mm-hmm. Not anything, but there's a lot of songs from yeah. that period. So I have a, a country music playlist, only one, and it's every country song that I like. <laughs> Sometimes I find ones that unlock a memory from my childhood that I add on there. The problem is there's like the bops that I will mm-hmm. like dance to whatever and i'm like oh hell yeah uh the, what the, before he cheats <laughs> yeah heads carolina exactly. tails california like yeah goodbye earl etc right like the upbeat ones and then there's ones that make me sob and i have to skip them when i'm driving because i'm like oh no i'll cry um uh don't take the girl 
Mm, yeah. Will end my life every time. I have to skip it as soon as I hear the intro because I'm like, no, 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 gonna cry. There are some that shouldn't make me cry, but I was listening to um, there... I've Been Watching You by, I think it's Rodney Atkins, I don't know, the other day. Mm-hmm. And it's a song about um, a man and his very young, like, four-year-old son. And mm-hmm. the whole song is about how the son is, like, watching him and copying him because he wants to grow up to be just like him. Yes. And there's a part where he, like, like the first chorus is him, like, <gasps> saying a bad word. And then he's like, where'd you hear that? And he's like, oh, I've been watching you. I want to be just like you. So he goes home and prays. And then when he's tucking his son into bed, he, like, prays, like, very sweetly. And he's like, oh, where'd you, like, learn to pray like that? And he's like, I've been watching you, Dad. And I'm, like, sobbing in the car. <laughs> yep. There's oh god, there are so many. I have a Hannah's classic country playlist. I love um that. yes, oh god. Uh Forever and Ever Amen by Randy Travis. Ah, tell me like, that one just showed up on mine too. <laughs> I love Randy Travis. Like, I do too. Um, and then he was in National Treasure 2. We can always get six degrees of um Nick Cage in yes, here. Yes, we can. Um there are some other there was when like you say nothing at all, Keith Whitley, he get, he just even just like listening to Kenny Rogers. Uh, we have a CD cl- classic country crossovers. Um, that's like Queen of Hearts. It's like nine to five. Like it's like those like pop country ones of like the eighties. God, I grew up with that. Ugh. But then just... the problem is if I shuffle it, you'll go from yeah. like don't take the girl or one that it'll make me cry. And there's no good reason for it to make me cry. But it's um take me to Texas by George Strait. I think mm-hmm. it's just like a being from texas type song you know one of those ones that like hits you right in the feels but like on the last chorus he sings uh, i mean on all the choruses but specifically the last chorus when he sings something about like i'm a child of the alamo like when i die take me don't take me home like whatever take me to texas and i just like sing it and cry because i bitch me too (laughs) i'm a child of the alamo and the yellow rose i really am (sighs) hook them but, like, you can go from that, which is a very sweet song, to one of my other personal favorite country songs, Dick Down in Dallas. <laughs> okay, I haven't heard that one. <laughs> I need you to look up the song Dick Down in Dallas. Thank God. It's unironically one of the best songs I've ever heard. Um, Dick Down in And it goes – it's one that, Dallas. like, it goes so hard. Like, it's musically a really fun song. And you're listening and you're like, why does this song go so hard? Oh um God. but lyrically wow down, down, um so this down, this episode is now dick down at twilight <laughs> um just got to just got to put that out there i hope that when you edited this you went in and just inserted the entire song into the episode so that i wish was forced to listen to dick i down i wish i could if i was ballsy i would um unfortunately I don't want to get sued. <laughs> oh, that's fair. That's valid. <laughs> you can't like copyright. like yeah. There's a whole um thing you have to click. I own the rights to everything in this episode. <laughs> I would say we own the rights to that song. <laughs> we don't made we it all? our own. We have to make our own parody version. Our historical romance. It's dict- already a parody. <laughs> I know. So you'd have to like parody parody it. Um, I can't. Goddamn. Um. Anyway, it's- this was a very long country music tangent. Yeah. I just highly recommend listening to either of our country music playlists. I will, we can we can link them. They've got. We sure can. Yours um, is probably older country versus mine. It is. is it, it's not like, anything like above two thousands. I don't think. Yeah, I think mine's mostly like kind of earlier two thousands. Yeah. So like, look at us. I'm older thing. Perfect. Anyway, okay. none of well. this is related to the topic of the episode. Yeah, it'll be. <laughs> I mean, this, okay, tempt me a Twilight. Romance or TBR, that is who we are. That is who we are. You're Um, Hannah. Yes, I am. I was going to say I'm Caroline, but that's not who I am. I was literally just going to say. You're both of us. (laughs) I'm the spirit of um, the podcast. I was so close to saying that. Um, You know the funny thing about this book, Hannah? (laughs) What? Slash Caroline? Is that... (laughs) um, I read this before you. Yes, you did. And, and I was like, shit. <laughs> as I was reading it, I was like, wow, I enjoy this book. I gave it like yeah. four stars. Hannah's going to love this book. Yeah. And the reason that I thought that is because I was like, oh, 
He's like a proto Tom Severin. He is. And then I was like, the, the. And then you read it and you posted, you were like the Harry Rutledge to Tom yes. Severin pipeline. And I was like, good. Was, I, uh, so... I read that right. I was. I mean, okay, I also gave this four stars just because I think, like, so I immediately had to read Leo's book. I'm so sorry. I couldn't wait. I had to do it. Um, and that no one I flew through. No spoilers for that one. I, no, I won't. Um, Come me I, Twilight. We're doing all the spoilers. Yes. Yes. I flew through that one. This one just took me a little bit longer to, like, get into, and it was, like, a little bit harder for me to, like, pick up. Um, but, like, sure. once I got into it, I was, like, there for it. Um, I so respect that man. Just fucking – ending that relationship <laughs> yeah <laughs> like carrie rutledge what, never like gets better no and i love him for it would i would i want someone to do that to me maybe not but i sure as hell loved reading about him just I absolutely no, ruining I this mind. man honestly if, like if, if i could see the future if it's this like hot rich I hotel owner oh, i was just so impressed with him just like being like yeah ariana grande i see it i want it I got it. Like, <laughs> just, like Terry Ritledge said, seven rings. <laughs> he knew what he wanted. He, oh, you made like a my list. wife? Gee, thanks. Just bought her. <laughs> just bought her. Literally. Like, he knew what he had to do and he did it and he didn't feel bad. And I also didn't feel bad. And <laughs> I sure, he never did. <laughs> I sure as hell I respect him so hard. Wasn't there a moment – it's been longer for me. It, it uh, has. It's been a while since I read it. <laughs> I think I've read like 12 books in the interim or something because yes. I'm unhinged. Um, but I feel like doesn't he apologize – he like halfway apologizes because Poppy's like – Oh, his – him and is upset about it. But he only like ha- – he's like, I don't really feel bad about it. But yeah, like- so his first apology – is like that he's like I don't feel bad and then he gets into it where he's like because I wouldn't have you yeah. I think like in his like more grand gesture or like the towards the end he's just what's the third act of this book he gets kidnapped <laughs> oh yeah okay <laughs> he, gets fucking, he fucking gets kidnapped and then she goes ballistic I was like yes queen yeah. I was like <laughs> say I was like I didn't know if I was feeling it but then I was like honestly I, I am because like the person who I thought did it didn't do it I was like cool he can just go uh, I don't know have a great life um God, i love lisa Clavis so i know and he was just like gone and that that was like after the huge like declaration of him being like i'm sorry like i feel so bad that i can't feel bad because like i love Dang. you too much to like regret it um and then he's just gone and she's like where is he <laughs> no one can find him and then like he was just in a fucking wall <laughs> like, just, i mean a very random a random part. Yeah, but like, um, it makes so much sense. It did. Because <laughs> it's Lisa Klapis. It did. So you're like, she's not going to break them up, really. No. And that's There's what I love. There's just going to be some, like, wild, completely out of left field. Someone someone better be getting shot, getting kidnapped. Like, that's the third act. Their that hidden I identity is being hidden revealed. I- yes. Or, yeah, and then he gets, like, in a carriage with the people who are trying right. to arrest him and bring him back to America, and then he gets dumped in this, like, right. stream, and there's, like, a storm, and then they think he's dead, which is one of my favorite tropes. Just one thing after another with Matthew Swift. Oh, I love him. Somebody I better love... be on their deathbed. Oh, yeah. Or, the, We're, you like, know, telling like a... the doctors they will not bleed someone. Well, and then that- we know better. He uh, Rutledge had the moment where he had to have the two doctors and the two opinions about her like sprained ankle. Oh, that and the funny thing about funny. that was that he was like, "Get another doctor. I want a yeah. second opinion." Before the first doctor had seen her, she, Poppy fell so I could fall in love. It was at that moment <laughs> that I was like, "This man, he can do no wrong." You know, I was like a little bit hesitant, and then he did like everything. He like got her the chocolate. I was. Oh no! It, it was way before that for me. It was when um. What is the Dodger was burrowing into his chair? <laughs> yeah, during their very first meeting, so just like, she has you were no just idea who sold. he is. Well, you already got me when he like I knew who yeah. he was, but Poppy didn't, so I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, because I uh. love a man who's just like Tom Severin. Like I, I want that one. Um, but like <laughs> I do. She's too. like, oh uh. no, Dodger like ripped up this chair. He's trying to nest, and Harry was like, I mean, the damage is already done. Like, let him nest. 
And she's like, somebody's going to have to pay for that chair. And he's like, meh, there's a budget in that. It's and, in the hotel budget. And I just loved how, like, everyone was like, he had a woman in his collection room. Oh, my God. It was he so He never funny. has a woman in his collection room. And Everybody then, like, Jake, whispering. like, Valentine was just like, what? And then like, we had the meddling, like, staff when they oh said God. that – um they like wrecked her room so that they had to share the room and he ended up sleeping on the sofa iconic of them <laughs> and they were like there's no like how do we fix him like they're in the same room and they still Everyone didn't have sex dead. like how do we <laughs> well and then valentine being like how do you know the state of their like marital affairs and the housekeeper being like i mean we check the sheets we wash the sheets we know they like, haven't had sex <laughs> uh okay to backtrack oh. The premise of this book, because this is a very unassuming book. This is Poppy. Mm -hmm. She is a very, like, uh, she was a character who just kind of, like, flew under the radar. And that's also because she just wanted a very normal life. Um, So, like, she starts the book off in love with someone else. Notoriously, that's not my favorite thing. But like I said, Harry just yeets this man into the sun and ruins his entire life. And I can't feel bad about it. So, like, he got rid of that obstacle. Um... And then and then they got intentionally ruined because he was like he took an opportunity I, and he went also, for it. It was kinda hot. <laughs> it was hot. When they were and I knew he was gonna do it, but they were making out at the like ball or whatever. Yeah. And he looked up over and at, like, he half saw her shoulder and then, and then like, immediately kiss. kissed her again. <laughs> yes. I knew. And of course, you being the reader, you're like, oh, yeah. so he knows somebody's coming and he's trying to yeah. ruin her and get her trapped in a marriage with him. Which, like, in practice, not okay. However, mm -hmm. in this, I was like, take oh. me, Harry, you know? Like, literally, I just I just loved it because then you got the dramatic declaration of, was it Michael Baining or whatever, at the wedding saying that he, like, went to my father and he, like, did this. Mm -hmm. So then she, like, still got married. So honestly, queen of her, too. Because I was, like, so scared that they were going to, like, delay their marriage. I didn't want to deal with that. But then they just, they got married. And well, because she knew she was ruined. Yeah, exactly. So, like, I was, I really appreciated how she just accepted it, <laughs> and then was like, oh, we'll, "We'll just see what happens." And like, she was kind of obviously pissed about it because her two sisters had love matches and stuff. Um, well, wasn't Harry kind of like? I mean, I took you. He could have taken you. Yeah. Well, and that's she like didn't quite realize it like at that moment, but then when she kind of like, could like rationalize it, she was like, "You're right." Mm -hmm. Like he didn't because like you all knew. That um, this Baining guy, his father controlled his entire, like, all the purse strings. And he wouldn't have let her marry him anyway. And, like, she gets to a point in the book where she's like, okay, you're right. Like, he never, like, I never would have been able to marry you. You were just, like, dragging me along. Because you, like, the guy didn't seem, like, all that bad. But he just obviously wasn't willing to fight for her. Because um, at that, like, Rutledge was like, take her then. He's like, you can literally take her out of this church and go marry her. And then the guy still didn't do it. And so, like, when she could go back on that and recount just how he didn't fight for her, then she was kind of like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm, we're here. It's fine. Um, you know what I this just, is reminding me of? Not, like, when you put the books side by side, they aren't very similar, mm -hmm. but just in, like, kind of the setup and the premise and the hero. Portrait of a Scotsman. Yeah. With the entire, like, he purposely yeah. ruins her so that he can marry her. And he's like, yep. I'm not good enough for you, but I want you anyway. And, and that was my issue with that book because I was so on his side. Like, I did not care. I was like, <laughs> and, like, obviously, I mean, Hattie, they like, were already married by the time yes. Hattie realized that yeah. he had done it on purpose. Yeah. Versus, um, th Poppy that's how going in. Yeah. So that was, that was a definite thing that you got it out of the way earlier. Um, but I do like to see men suffer, so it is also fun when they, like, punish them. And in this case, she just – like, he was like, I just want her to smile at me, <laughs> and she's not smiling at me. Like, she's just kind of pissed off at me. And I just – I loved how he um, just saw her smiling at other people, and then she just wasn't smiling at him, and he was sad about it. And then the whole sick scene happened, and – oh. I just want to note because we kind of skipped, but we've talked about the ferret, or I talked about Dodger. Yes, yes. Um, what I haven't talked about yet is, of <laughs> course, the hedgehog, Medusa. For those of you who don't know, hedgehogs are like 
maybe my favorite animal. I love them. And I'm currently mm-hmm. on a quest. Because for some reason, I read like several books that all had romance books. I mean, that had hedgehogs in them. Yep. Um, and the the next Erica Ridley was announced and there was a little hedgehog on the mm-hmm. cover in the Pillies part. So I was like, well, it looks like I'm now on a quest to read all the romance novels with hedgehogs that I can. And this one, of course, will probably play a bigger role, I assume, in Beatrix's book. Yes. Um, yeah. Because it's she's the one that loves the animals. But she has a little hedgehog named Medusa. And Medusa is very near and dear to my heart, specifically because there is a scene. That, true. That it's was the only scene. thing I wrote down a quote from. Mm. It was the only quote I wrote down. And it's when Poppy and Harry are walking around in the garden and mm-hmm. Bee is pretending essentially to chaperone them. Like, she's out there, but she's yeah. not with them. Um, and she's walking Medusa, the hedgehog, <laughs> as you do. Because she's too plump. <laughs> Because she's like, too plump. the visual, I was like, "Oh, I just." That's the that. cutest thing in the entire world. Um, and Medusa gets away from her and like goes under mm-hmm. one of the hedges and toddles her little way across into the path. And I think Poppy like kind of tries to stop him yeah. or is like, mm-hmm. "Oh, like you know, she's she's like whatever." Yeah, and he <laughs> scoops her up. We're both like and like lets her little toddle in his hand, and she's and open like. Him talking about the hedgehog and the only quote from this entire book that i wrote down because this is when she's trying to decide if she's gonna marry him Mm -hmm. is a man who could charm a hedgehog and understand jokes about ancient greek poets was a man worth taking a risk on and never before has any quote ever been so caroline coded (laughs) you had me at hedgehog those are like the two things i'm sorry if a man understood a joke that i made about an ancient greek poet and charmed a little hedgehog in front of me. <laughs> Let me tell you, we're not waiting for the wedding vows. Um, <laughs> are you joking? <laughs> Is this a joke? He I don't just... need to know anything else about that man. That you're right. That was a pivotal scene for me. I was like, he can do anything, and if he's like this kind to like these little animals. And, and like the, little animals, because like Beatrix was like on his side. She was the only yeah. one who like wasn't angry because she's like he's good with animals. Like you two are just kind of like animals. Like you're she gonna was annoy iconic him. Like, for that. Yeah. Oh. And because she was, because she was like who? Um, Poppy was the rabbit, and then uh, what was Rutledge? Something um, to like chase the rabbit, or like the rabbit to like annoy. I think he was. Was he a cat? Was he? Yeah, a cat. Yeah. I think something and the rabbit has to rush the cat in order (laughs) to like because otherwise the cat would chase the rabbit around but if the rabbit rushes the cat they can be friends yeah yeah I just she was a she was a good a great character in this book Mm -hmm. just also because she was the only one who wasn't like actively trying to get Poppy not (laughs) to get married to this man um I mean they had their it's just like everybody was trying to get Cassandra to not marry Tom Severin because they're like oh he's not great but like and then I mean, in that book, there was also a ruination, but, like, he didn't ruin her. Um, mm-hmm. A dick-ass man No, did. he just bought an entire newspaper <sighs> to save her. I need to revisit that book. I loved that one so much. And, like we said, he's, like, this is, like, a uh, They're not quite iconic. the same. No, like, just, like, an iconic, like, Lisa Kleypas, like, hero type. Yeah, they, they feel very similar. Mm-hmm. Um, but also speaking, of, I this is now the second book where I fell in love with a romance hero because he coddled a hedgehog. <laughs> Thinking about you, Elizabeth Everett, the perfect <sighs> Great equation, cliff. where he holds a hedgehog even though he doesn't want to, and then is like, "Oh, look at her little nose! It's shaped like a heart." I shut up. Love that man. I love him so much. I just think that like hedgehogs <sighs> are the perfect and like if a man can yeah. charm a. He- because they're prickly What's like they're the they're, they're prickly naturally and they're prickly. like afraid of you and mm-hmm. you have to like let them trust you so that they yeah. come out of there listen a man who can charm a hedgehog and understand jokes about ancient greek poets i and mean very specific gone. but if it's they can, so specific <laughs> if they can knock it out of the park if they can check Lisa that said, i'm gonna write a quote that <laughs> is so caroline coded <laughs> i she just, knew oh she did and that's why I was like, because I, I said it before, I think in our Seduce Me at Sunrise, I was like, you know, I just feel like we're going to love Tempt Me at Twilight because like we have no expectations. Like we have like nothing, like I have no, like I don't even know who this poppy person is. Like, I don't know. 
Um, I just love that they were like staying at his hotels in like the forest proximity. And then like once they were married, then she was trying to befriend the staff. Then he was like, you can't do that. And she's like, I'm going to do it. Oh, I forgot uh, about that whole plot line. Mm-hmm. I don't remember most of the plot of this book. I remember the vibes. Really? And I took notes. So I would remember. That's good. That was yeah, smart. because I was immediately – when I was reading Leo's book, I was like, wait, I'm going to get these so confused. Um, yeah, that's I'm why gonna, I didn't read Leo's. I'm going to reread it. I loved it so much. I'm going to reread it before we do our episode. Oh, I'm so because, excited. Listen. Me too. I'm so excited yeah. for you to read it. Mm. Um, mm, yes. Mm-mm. Um, what, what else? Um, the weight that cottages carry, once again, um, on their <laughs> on their backs. Um, I loved how they handled that. Like, so they had to go. Um, okay, so w- do I remember why she ended up going to Hampshire? No. Oh, it's um, she does though. Oh, I don't remember what he did. Yes, he does something. I don't he does remember something. And whatever it was, it was like the last. Oh, the gun. Was it the guns? No, that was earlier. No, there was. I don't know. Like he did something that pissed her off, and she mm-hmm. was like you know what that's fine i'm gonna go home valentine is gonna help me but she very specifically was not running away to actually get away from him yes she she was like very intentionally was like this is going to make him i'm gonna get him out of this environment Mm -hmm. i'm sure it was something to do with the like staff because he was in that whole thing where he didn't want her hanging out with the staff i have truly it's a mind blank um but i, I love, don't know what the specific thing was <laughs> i just i loved how immediately she asked valentine she's like you think he'll come after me right and he's like nothing will stop him and i oh, was yeah. like this is big reese winterborn energy big <gasps> reese type is hero energy the the capitalist heroes they buy my heart so it's easily the way they will like throw money mm-hmm. at a problem but mm-hmm. it's like that's not the thing that gets you yeah it's like the weight behind what they're throwing mm-hmm. money at. Well, like, like Tom Severin will just buy a whole newspaper, mm-hmm. and he'll buy uh, Rutledge will buy her chocolate that he had to go. He had to send Valentine to go to the chocolatiers, like chocolate. To, I don't know what the fucking chocolate maker's called. Whoever makes chocolate, he had to go to their house because they were off season because they were relocating, and he was like, "Get her this chocolate." And then she was like, "How? Like, how, what is? Like, how did you get this?" He's like, "I just sent him over and like demanded it." And she's like, oh, my God. Like, that's so It was sexy. basically like a historical billionaire romance. Yeah. That's it. That's what Tempt Me at Twilight is. It's a historical billionaire romance. And I'm not into billionaire romances in, like, contemporary romance because they're always like, I don't want your money. And I'm like, but I do want your money. Give it to me now. Please. I want, like, an Amex. Um, but in this, it just worked so well. Um well, and Poppy is like, I'm annoyed with you, so I'm going to go home, and you're going to follow yes. me, and I'm going to get you out of this environment. I wonder if it had to do with – I. there was something where, like, he came back so exhausted. Oh, I loved that scene. And she read, she to, read him to him because to her she naturally sleep. has a very soothing voice, so she read him to sleep. <laughs> she made him But eat. then he woke up and left. I don't know if that was the thing that pissed her off, but it was one of the things I think that was like really yeah, well, that was because he wouldn't stop working. That was a little bit, I think, earlier in the relationship. Like when she – or that was like maybe like at like 40% maybe. I don't quite know, but <gasps> – I know oh. what it was. Oh. oh. It was the first time they tried to have sex. Yeah. I'm saying, he, yeah, I still don't remember. I don't fucking know. <laughs> no, Keep he, going. He, <laughs> oh, wait. You, you're right. He, he penetrated her. Left. And then I don't – was it like he was too – So he didn't want to hurt her. So she so... – Yeah, he was like too horny. Yeah, he was <laughs> inside her, fully erect, this man. And then he's just like, I'm sorry, and just y- goes he, into the bathroom. He's like angry about it, but yeah. he's like angry at himself and because himself. he's hurting her. Mm-hmm. But he didn't and explain he any it. of that to her. No. He just left. She thinks she's done something wrong. It hurt – like she's like in great pain. Like she is not enjoying this. Yeah. Like they've tried to like they've got to a point where they were pretty close and like they both wanted it and then so she just felt super hurt that he just like left and he didn't explain she didn't know well, and then that and leads to one of the so- funniest scenes ever which is her bullying Leo into talking about <laughs> male problems and Leo being like I'm not having this conversation with you and she was like what what was it um he was like did he he made some euphemism about how she was like did he not get hard and she was like no he was <laughs> he was like too hard like it was just 
Yeah, she was like, no, he was super hard. And Leo was like, I actually want to die. Yeah, like he retreated while still being hard. And he like, I just, the visual of a hard, erect Harry Rutledge just walking into the bathroom. And like a George Clooney run. Yeah, I was just going to The sentence. Just fully erect. It just, it just sends me. I actually like the idea of him like arms straight down by his side. Yes, just, just like speed walking out of the I just, I, it was so good. So then, yeah, so then she is just hurt. She's baffled. She doesn't know what to do. So she's like, Hampshire, because Leo already, he was like, I'll give you a week. Like, you're going to last a week, and then you're going to come to me, and then we're going to go home because you're not fit for this marriage. He's too unemotional and brash, whatever. I respect and that I th- Leo was like, yeah. I'll get you out. Yep. <laughs> He's, he, uh, so I will be waiting. I'm not leaving town. No. He, he I will get you out of there. God, I love that man. Um, so then I think she lasted like two weeks. He's like, you lasted like a little bit longer than I thought. So like, kudos to you. Um, and then I just, I just loved how she wanted him to follow her because sometimes like that could like disrupt the plot. You know, like if they were finally like making headway, and then she gets angry. But she wasn't angry. She was just sad. And then he follows her, and then there's a cottage. Uh, I loved it. And then he had to like go and like defend himself to like the family. And then there was like Kev and Cam, and because Kev is like huge and Harry's pretty yeah, big, Kev so then they were going to like straight brawl. up murder Harry. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! And then uh, when they were like, "Hey, you need to distract Kev, Win. Like you're the only one he'll <laughs> listen to," and he's about to murder Harry, and she's like, mm, "Good point. Hey, Kev, I'm pregnant." Uh, and they were like wow quick thinking how'd you come up with that and she was like no i actually <laughs> and then kev is just like <laughs> kev's just ceases so to sc- function he's so scared oh i i do love like the hathaways like yes their like family and dynamic i think Clavis yeah. writes really good group dynamics mm-hmm. i just like you said, like, um, you liked Cam more when you could see him in the vignettes in, like, book two. Same thing with, like, Kev and, like, Wynn. Like, we, like, there were no vignettes of them, really, in this book. That was um, Marks and Leo. Like, you got mm. their POVs a little bit because we're setting up that book. Um, but, yeah. I just love seeing them all happy and doing their thing. Wasn't this the book mm. where um, Marks – Leo comes back and they're like, "Don't make fun of her because she accidentally she dyed, dyed her, her hair green." And then he's like, but then "Oh, she that's- hadn't." Well, because she- so she had dyed it green, and then they put a. Well, pro- by the like time a- Leo gets yeah. there, so they put a solution. He's like, "She's going to be this. She's going to be that. I'm going to have like <laughs> fodder for days." I wish I had written the quote down because that's the other like if there were going to be an- another <laughs> quote that I had written down, but they were like, "Leo, do not." Go bother Miss Marks right now. Like she please, is delicate. She's she is having fragile. a bad day. Just leave her alone. And he's like, okay. And they, I think one of them is like, I give him three minutes or mm-hmm. something. And then the next line is like two minutes and 37 seconds later, Leo is on his way to find his arch nemesis or something like that. And then <laughs> she has the most beautiful hair he's ever seen. Cause she had dyed it before um, to like a mousy brown. Um, yes, which I never know. It's not her natural color. Yeah. So then he's like, she dyes her hair. What? And then, um, when he sees her like blonde, luscious, golden wheat spun locks, he's like, oh my god. <laughs> he was. I just him. love love their dynamic. And then, uh, oh, they're so god. funny. Leo is so funny. <sighs> like just genuinely in every scene, with the exception of um. Mind till midnight because he's yeah still, like, deep he was trying. going through he's it. Mind till midnight, uh, but every time Leo he shows haunted. up, he's so funny. I'm trying to like I'm downloading the ebook literally right now in this moment so that I can find. I do wish the very specific quote because I, I lost my mind. I go through that. Um, with like books all the time like i wish if you got like if you like buy an ebook or if you buy like an audiobook or buy a physical copy i wish you got the ebooks that you could search i found it because i need to search it's in the first chapter actually what i think what the quote that i was looking for 
Really? Just kidding. It's in the 19th. <laughs> Like, when what? I first searched it, it came out as, like, number one. I don't know why oh. I said that. Whatever. Um, so, we have uh, – I don't know if it worked or not. Amelia was helping her to wash it a while ago. No matter what the result is, you are to say nothing. You're telling me that tonight, Marx will be sitting at the supper table with hair that matches the asparagus, and I'm <laughs> not supposed to remark on it? He snorted. I'm not that strong. Please, Leo, Bobby murmured, touching his arm. If it were one of your sisters, you wouldn't mock. Do you think that little shrew would have any mercy on me were the situations reversed? He rolled his eyes as he saw their expressions. Very well, I'll try not to jeer, but I make no promises. Leo sauntered toward the house in no apparent hurry. He didn't deceive either of his sisters. How long do you think it will take him to find her? Poppy asked Wynne. Two, perhaps three minutes, Wynne replied, and they both sighed. In precisely two minutes and 47 seconds, Leo had located his arch enemy in the fruit orchard behind the house. <laughs> and it took <sighs> me out. Because it's a paragraph break, but when you're listening to the audiobook, they're just like, uh, yep. like that felt very cinematic to me. Yep. <laughs> like immediate cut to Leo, like scurrying to go find her with her green hair. <laughs> it's uh, in precisely two minutes. And also calling her. His arch enemy <laughs> killed me. Their dynamic is so good. I love them. Oof, that epilogue, or was it the epilogue, or was it just it, like a? a it last was. Scene it was like the right? last part of the epilogue. Um, he like walks into her room and he's like, "Should we talk about what happened?" And I was like, "Yes, Oof. we shall." And yes, I ran down to my room. I it gave found me the my same book. Feeling as the um, Evie and Saint Vincent epilogue at the end of it happened one yeah. autumn. Yeah. Where you're like, huh? Yep. Huh? Uh, I like I couldn't restrain myself. I had I had thoughts. I had a hot girl thoughts, and then I was so weak. <laughs> I wasn't the I wasn't the main character I wanted to be. I just had to I had to read it, and so like um to get to get back onto uh, the other Rutledge and Poppy. Yes. Uh, so he shows up. He has to go through all the family members, and she's just hanging out in a cottage. She's, like, waiting for him um, to come and, you know, try to make up. And then it's their, like, honeymoon. Ugh. Then he was just so peaceful. He still had, like, all of his correspondence um, with Valentine and stuff, but... Well, but <sighs> LOL at him being like, yeah, we're not coming back, and Valentine being, like, confusion? <laughs> and all the staff members being like, he's never taken a break, ever. And he's like, what he's on vacation. Mean? They were like, he's on a honeymoon. And then, like, when he gets back, he's like, Valentine, you need to go on vacation. And he's just like a changed man. God, I love it. I love that. Mm. Some people say you don't have to change for love, but I sure love to see that. I think you that's know? why, like, <sighs> some people, and to a certain extent, rightfully get really upset with, like, the idea that Cleopas writes so many capitalist heroes and, like, yeah. joke that, like, she's very capitalist and she makes that known in her work. I don't know that I would necessarily buy into the idea. Like, her heroes are very bootstraps, a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Like, they do, like, put in the work and, well, they put in the work, but at least in the case of some of them, it, they make it known that they had help getting there. I'm yeah. thinking about, like, again, the magic. It's like he has very powerful friends that help him get where he is, mm -hmm. and they make that. Anyway, all of that aside, the thing that makes me think, like, I don't necessarily have a problem with these capitalist heroes is that almost all if not all of them, at least all the ones that I have read, their, like, bootstraps business mentality is the thing that nearly costs them their humanity. And it's yeah. human connection that pulls them out of it that, like, yeah. reconnects them to that humanity. It almost feels, I don't want to say anti-capitalist, because I don't know that I would go that far. But, like... I really like reading about, like, a mm -hmm. Tom Severin type who's dedicated his entire life to business and has only had five feelings ever and doesn't know how to have uh, friends, let alone a romance, and has to, like, mm -hmm. dedicate himself to this romantic relationship and realize, like, oh, there's more to life. And that's why it's have so... more than five feelings. It's so dramatic. And, like, that's the drama that I want is, like, having to, like, repair that relationship and, like – express their love because obviously they're in love but they don't know how to express it because mm -hmm. i mean tom has five feelings and love isn't one of them um <laughs> and so it's just 
I have such a great time. I mean, I loved Winterborn, T- Tom. Well, then you end man. up with like Harry Rutledge, who is exhausted mm-hmm. beyond the point of belief all the time and has dedicated his life to this and never intends to get married and whatever. And then gets married because he just decides he wants this woman, but he never intends to like love yeah. her. And That's... then when he does, you end up with a guy who like has a better work life balance yeah. and is like treating his employees better and is because mm-hmm. he was already like a good like he used his health care like his health i mean right I don't, like he didn't have health insurance i don't know what their insurance he took was care but, of like, his employees yeah like if someone was sick he would make sure they would get handled and stuff but like after he knew their like he took it like a step far like he wasn't a bad boss but after he was an empathetic boss mm-hmm. it, more so than like you work for me, therefore I have to take care of you out of duty. And right, then, like, like an at the end, connection. yeah, at the end, he's like he wants to. Um, I, I just love seeing his progression. I thought it was like his the declaration, or, like the love. I thought it was just so sweet. Um, oh God, I just. And then it goes into the beginning of Iron Man and he gets kidnapped and he has to he's forced to make fucking guns. <laughs> like who knew? I mean, it's Lisa Kleypas. That's not the wildest third act. No. He gets kidnapped. Shout out like, to Secrets of a Summer Night because that one really Oh my god, you're right. Out like no other book. <laughs> I, I was don't not think expecting any that. third act will ever top that one just in terms of my sheer disbelief. Oh yeah, he's gonna go get exploded, blown up. She was That's like, the and word. here's an action sequence where he's trapped under a burning locomotive, or a trapped in a burning building, stuck under something, and she offers to cut his leg off with his pocket knife. <laughs> I was trying to figure out how to work that into. I didn't end up doing a Secrets of a Summer Night Valentine when mm-hmm. i did my like lisa claypas wallflowers and raven l's valentines that's one of the ones that didn't make it I but when i was this thinking about it i really off. considered i'd be like i would cut your leg off with a pocket knife valentine like <laughs> he was close he was ready well he was like that's not gonna work like just get out of here that's not you can't do that and she was like do you think this is sharp enough and he was like annabelle you need to leave <laughs> I just – I was – because I was getting concerned about where the third act was going to go. Yeah. Um, because I th- – like, I thought it was going to be Michael, and I thought he was going to be annoying, and I thought that Poppy – because, like, there was a point where Poppy um, wanted to go just, like – because Michael, after um, his relationship with her got ruined, he just took to gambling, drinking, going to uh Pulling up at the hotel with a gun. Yeah. And then he – and then, like, when they were – was it when they were on their honeymoon when he, mm-hmm. like, showed up and he had a gun and he was unhinged? And um, so you knew or you thought it was going to go revolve around him because then at one time Poppy was, like uh, – was the, she was talking to Leo about it. And um, she was, like, I just wanted to make sure – Yeah. She's, like, I want to make sure that he's just okay. Like, I don't love him. Like, I don't want to be with him. But, like, I want to make sure he's okay. And Leo's, like, but from Harry's perspective, like, kind of gotta think like <laughs> would he want you to go and <laughs> doesn't she i thought she tried to talk to harry about it and was like well, let she... me go talk to him and harry lost his damn mind that's that's at like this i think they're like well, two I, different I think he points says... i don't oh i think i don't know which... because then leo is like i'm surprised he didn't take you over his knee yeah. why the hell would you yeah. even suggest that what the f- well, because then there was you? Because then there was a second part where she was like, dude, I don't love him. Like, I don't want him. Like, there were, like, two parts where she, like, talked to Harry about it. Like, one was closer to the end. That was after the Leo thing. But, yeah, she tried to to go to Harry and be like, hey, can I just, like, go meet with him and make sure, like, talk some sense into him? He's like, no. And then she was angry about it. And Leo was like, dude, no. And then at the end, he he still thought um, – he was still, like, insecure. And then at one, the one point she was like – I don't want him. I don't love him. It's you, you stupid fool. And that was a good that was a good line. Um, I don't so remember. I it. may like, not have her heart, <laughs> but I'll have the rest of her. <sighs> and then of course he wants the heart too. I do love a hero. I really love like I I love the hero who doesn't think he's good enough. 
Mm-hmm. But I vastly prefer a hero who doesn't think he's good enough and is like, luckily for me, I'm going to take the thing that I want anyway. Well, exactly. Because I'm a exactly. bad guy and I'm going to take the thing versus yeah. the one who like refuses to be with Ugh. Kev. Yeah. I yeah. don't like the Kev brand no. of I'm not good enough. No. I want the Harry, the Tom Severin, the yep. Reese Winterborn. Yep, exactly. Because I hate, I want them to be decisive. I find that hot. Like, I don't like the waffling and the self-pity. Because honestly, some of these people, they have reasons to self-pity. Like, they that is okay. But I just don't like when they think for the other. A lot of times they try to be like this, like, in the long run, she won't be happy. Like, they try to think like Mm -hmm. as if they were the heroine but harry's just like i don't care like i want her i will have her yeah like now in real life yeah red flags everywhere yeah um however in my (laughs) historical romance fantasy where we know he's the good guy or at least well because he's like the 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 romantic hero because like there was there was also a great line where he was like the princess um, ends up with the villain, but the villain treated her better than the prince or something. That is good. Um, I now forever will be um, associating Harry Rutledge with I could be a better boyfriend than him. <laughs> yeah. Every time Harry Rutledge walks into a room now, it's going to be <laughs> slow-mo wind blowing in his hair. I could be a better boyfriend than him. Like, yeah, that's it. Just that song yeah. on a loop. Yeah. I will say um, this book was a lot less steamy than the others in the yeah. series. And and Leo's book has a lot. Um, or at least, like, a, a, a comparable to the first two. Because the first two, like, had a lot of steam, like, in one section of the book. And I was like, whoa, they're just continuing to have sex. So, like, a lot. But it was just those sections. Yes. Um, this one, obviously, like, it didn't – I don't think it really needed more – um, but I did notice that there were uh, fewer because they had like the first time, which he George Clooney ran <laughs> full, fully erect into the bathroom. Also, um, will be linked in notes now. Is that I, it's video from the clip. movie The Descendants? And anytime someone references running, it's all I can think about. And then I told you <laughs> yeah. because it's just so good. Like that man just takes off in his flip flops, and he's God. <laughs> We we watched that movie recently again, and we we're just like, <laughs> just, just I love how he runs, um, and I don't know what I was talking about after running. Oh yeah, okay. So I don't know if he had, like gotten her off before that. There's normally like oral like or like fingering. Probably did so that they, they know the the potential of the pleasure. Um, so there's probably like that, and then the cottage happened. Um. I think there was like a cot or something in the cottage or a floor. I don't know. Um, so like not as much as the first two, but I think it worked for the story. And again, like the end, um, he gets kidnapped after they return to the hotel and all the dramatic love declarations. And I think they like have sex at some point. And then he's like, he finally says he loves her and then he's just gone. And she's like, what? <laughs> she's like and then people are like did he just leave she's like no like he he wouldn't do this like so she knows and i also liked that where she never thought that he was leaving her she's like something is wrong immediately um and then she just like went full attack mode on people who weren't taking it seriously and like trying to find him and i loved that for her i love seeing mm-hmm. her like go to the mattresses for him and then obviously like they had to like go he's like living in a fucking wall <laughs> forced to make weapons <sighs> and then he gets rescued and happily ever after and again i don't remember the epilogue let me look do they have a baby i don't know she may be pregnant i never remember oh there's that's she oh is, the epilogue is only three yeah, days later i was gonna say the epilogue is like three days later and she's like i'm late and he's like <laughs> I didn't know you had an appointment. And she's like, no. <laughs> I'm late. Oh, God. I just love the reaction. And then we the get reaction. the Leo and Kat. Mm-hmm. I just love the reaction of the men when, like, the women reveal the pregnancy, like, in historical romance. It just does something to me. And then there's See, a whole... back on the Leo thing, because I can't stop thinking about, like, if I were reading Tempt Me at Twilight when it came out. Ye- oh, that's... Yeah. I would not have and survived. And it ends. And you're mm. like, huh? 
Mm. What? Exactly in that tone of voice. Well. Well. (laughs) We. That's all I've got. Yeah. I had a great time with this. Not like an absolute favorite, but like a good one. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, like. Of the the first three, because I haven't read the next one, I think it's mm -hmm. the best one so far. Yeah. Yep. It. I liked, um, so of the ones I've read, Leah's is my favorite, then this one, then book one, then book two. I didn't, uh, yeah, I didn't dislike any of them really. Like, I, they're fine, like the first two. Um, I actually, I, I rounded the first one up to four. I had a good time with that one. Um, and I think I could have gone either way with book two. Um, but this one was easily, I, the only reason I didn't give it a five or like round up like a four and a half to a five was just because it took me a really long a longer time to read and like get into and like there were some things but then they all worked itself out so like if I if I had audiobooks that I wanted to listen to like if I liked the narrator and I went back to this and reread it I could definitely like jump up interesting to like a five if I wanted I mean I'm devastated that I'll never listen to the audiobook for Leo's book I'm so sad I think I just didn't, like, love Poppy. I feel about Poppy similarly to the way that I feel about Cassandra, which is that she's fine. I don't have anything against her. I don't think she was annoying. Yeah. Um, Like, I enjoyed her. I just couldn't tell you, like, specific personality things about her necessarily. Um, Yeah. I think my least favorite thing was just her prior attachment to Baining, but then that obviously led into Rutledge being. I loved – I liked the drama. Exactly. I don't like think I it would have been as how... satisfying for him to break it off. No, if that's... she didn't actually care about Ex- the guy. Exactly. Like I like how it worked. Like if I read it in the summary, it'd be a book that I would avoid. But knowing the execution of it in the book, I really liked it. Well, so I, I was very impressed even with that. Later is like you know what? I never even really doesn't she have that moment where she's like, I don't think I actually loved him. Yeah, yeah. Because she's like, because just... well, at the beginning she was like, it's like a slow simmering. Like, walk in the park kind of love. Yeah. And then, obviously, you, she says that, and we know that she's going to have the all-encompassing, like, right. screaming, fighting, say, and kissing in the rain. I think it's funny you couldn't get into it, because for me, I remember just – I mean, again, I did the audiobooks because I don't have mm-hmm. the same booth with Rosalind Landor oh, that you do. God. An um, enemy. But I've been listening to audiobooks while I go on my walks. We have, like, a mm-hmm. kind of woodsy trail behind our house. Um and it like it gets me to walk more because I'm like I want to listen to more. What if I just double this walk? Um, but I like very clearly remember starting that audiobook while I was walking mm-hmm. and being so delighted by her getting like stuck in the back little like chasing. Yeah, it, it opens with her like chasing it's a, a ferret very, it's around, a very fun. trying to get a love letter, finding this hidden passageway, meeting a man in the hidden passageway. Who then and he's like coming like, up behind her, her and like yeah he's very sexy. Hot. Um, pulls her into this office and you obviously know who he is, but she does not, and he's mm-hmm. clearly having a great time. Like play, and then he there the whole like ferret like digs up his chair thing, and I remember and there's I was, a, like, there are I monkeys crazy. Like I'm glad that there was no one on that trail while I was on it <laughs> because I was like grinning. I had my little AirPods in and I was yeah. like cracking up, just absolutely delighted by the premise of this book. Yeah. Of just like her being like, I bet Mr. Rutledge, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. And Harry's like, mm hmm. Mm-hmm. In, the, in the book's defense, I started it like a few times late at night and I just couldn't. I was like, I need to go to bed. Like I tried and then I just that's ended fair. up like falling, falling asleep. Um, once they got married, that's when I was like in it to win it. Yeah, interesting. Um, but I, I liked the premise. I thought it was very fun Um, how that happened. And then I, like maybe it lost me just a little bit. And then they got married and I was like, yay. I love that for me. I can see that. There was a little back and forth. I just really never recovered from the image of a plump little hedgehog waddling out (sighs) on the path in front of them and then him, like, letting her crawl into his hands. And then the part that Dodger plays, just how he loves. I love Dodger. Every time she describes, there's, like, a very specific movement where he does, like, a little victory dance where he kind of, like, hops sideways. And mm-hmm. every single time she says it, I'm like, that's the cutest thing I've ever heard of in my entire because I can picture it. You're gonna lose I know your exactly in the next book. Stop. I'm already not prepared, <laughs> but I know like exactly the funny little sideways hop that he's doing. Yeah. And I think it's so funny. Ugh. Ferrets are really gross. Yeah. But dogs I mean, are really funny. Hedgehogs, hedgehogs are also too. gross. Do- I don't they like they poop when they run? So like when they're in their wheel, they like exercise the shit out of them. Literally, I heard 
that there is a way to train them. I heard you can actually this. litter train hedgehogs, huh. but I don't know. That might be a thing that requires like tons and tons of work. I have no idea how accurate that is. Gotcha. I just really briefly have been considering just not telling my parents and going out and ad- adopting a hedgehog. Someone I on- just really want one. Someone on Bookstagram has a hedgehog. She bought it um oh. a couple months ago and i think he's like a very prickly head like he's got a personality and i'm just like i'm so jealous oh. of you i know i just like really don't do well with like all of our animals are outside animals yeah which i like because there's no cleaning up of bodily mm-hmm. functions you just feed them yeah and they hang out outside i mean obviously we bring them in when it's too hot or too cold but like mm-hmm. for the most part they just live outside and there's not a lot of other upkeep necessary yeah, I grew and up the thing with hamsters. With a hedgehog is that they would be gross. Yeah, <laughs> gotta, like clean the cage, and they're nocturnal. Yeah, yeah, that, it's like a hamster extreme. Well, a guinea pig is a hamster extreme, and then you got a they're hedgehog, which so is so cute. I know, and they're little prickly, and they're they've got their little noses, their little that heart. <laughs> And just, like, the way she described the hedgehog, the way she described the hedgehog of just, like, looking at him, like, adoringly, like. There's a picture that I have saved on Instagram because my mom is where I got my love of hedgehogs. She's Mm -hmm. always loved hedgehogs. They're all over the house, like, little stuffed hedgehogs (laughs) and things. Um, But I, so I save hedgehogs to show her. And there's one that I will never be unsaving because it's somebody did, like, a photo shoot of it. You know, like, nice professional Mm -hmm. pictures of hedgehogs. But the hedgehog looks like it's kind of smiling. Um, It's, like, a series of photos. But you can see its two little teeth kind of sticking out. (laughs) And I was like, this is the cutest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. We'll link it. We will. I'll send it to Hannah. The show notes. The show notes will be popping this week. (laughs) We'll have, what is it? George Clooney running. I'm gonna dick down in Dallas. George Clooney running our country Spotify playlist. Yeah. Um, a, a hedgehog. Of a hedgehog. <laughs> and if there's anything else, I'll have listened to it upon editing. But oh, um, I just love romance so much. I do too. My favorite thing from the Valentine's thing was like there were a lot of people like retweeting and like uh, quote tweeting, and so many of them were just like random accounts that weren't book accounts. They were just like mm-hmm. random people who had read these books, and I just love knowing. Mm-hmm. that this seemingly like unsuspecting like person on this twitter account who just has a whole life has read like cressley cole or like knows the awash in yearning spunk like i just <laughs> i love knowing <laughs> that about those people it made yeah. me so happy it was just uh, oh god i love valentine's day <laughs> i love I love romance well that's i was like a little bit worried because i did specifically just the wallflowers and the raven elves mm-hmm. Because those were just your the winter born ones were so funny. Because <laughs> I was looking for quotes and I was like, whole why letter. is this entire book? <laughs> I did that with last year. I did um, Jane Austen hero Valentine's. Yeah. Or Jane Austen male characters because some of them were not heroes. I think I was, for, I think uh, I was following you at that point. So I think I remember those. I feel like your Valentine's last year might have been – they were either the thing that made me follow you or, like, they were one of the <laughs> first things that I saw. Like, somebody had shared them and I was like, this is – or it was, like, one of the earliest things. Yeah. Whatever. The Captain Wentworth um, persuasion one was just his entire letter copy and pasted. <laughs> and and I was thinking about me. that and I was like, you know who else has a letter that I could copy and paste? Reese Winterborn. But Reese, I was looking up because sometimes I just go on Goodreads and look at quotes to see if there's mm-hmm. anything good. The problem is that um, the entirety of marrying Winterborn is just Reese Winterborn saying the most romantic, insane things you've ever heard in your life. And I was like, how am I supposed to choose one of these? I couldn't. I made four. Um, <laughs> my f- it oh, just- but my point was I was worried like – with the ones that didn't have specific names in them, I was like, are the step backs recognizable enough? Mm-hmm. Especially with, like, the wallflowers that people that aren't super in the weeds of historical mm-hmm. romance, are they going to know? And I shouldn't have worried. They'll, nature will find a way. That's they all knew. Learned. No one – I was even wor- – I was like, maybe I'll get a comment that's like, can you list the books? Mm-hmm. No one did. They all knew. Yeah, there was one on mine, and I think it was – it was the Duke of Sin one. Um, mm. And I was like – because it was just a step back. Um, but I I was worried about the Lothair one. I don't know. That was like my least – like I, that was the one that I had the least like emotional attachment to or like I didn't feel – str- like, not like one of the most recognizable. Yeah, well, not, not like emotional attachment. Like I didn't have as much faith in that one that it was like 
because well that was probably the best one because <laughs> I needed I needed an extra one like I wanted mm-hmm. you know to fill the 10 slides and I was thinking because I already had um the a hunger like no other one like that I had Lachlan's locked and loaded um and then I was thinking about it and I was like well there is Lafair. <laughs> like there is he's a whole like psychology textbook in and of itself <laughs> and so I <laughs> I got there eventually um it has been a long amount of time yeah you're gonna have to do some cutting <laughs> Mhm. my bet's like an hour and 15 that's that's my bet oh y'all i'm so sorry we didn't even have that much to say about this book. no no it's always the ones where i'm like it'll be a quickie i believe it's pronounced and... quiche <laughs> quiche no, have you not seen that meme? No. Oh, it's like a Tumblr We're meme. We're bantering again. <laughs> I wrote it into a a musical that I co-wrote in college. Well, we wrote the script, not so. I wrote one of the songs, but it was about the Greek gods. The only song that I wrote was called It's Not Incest If It's Greek. <laughs> I mean, that's true. Um, And it was chaos is what it was, but... um. One of the bits was a Tumblr meme that I stole oh. where Persephone is horny all the time for Hades. And she's like, hey, if you hurry, like, we've got time for a quickie. And Hades goes, I believe it's pronounced quiche. <laughs> and she's I like, not, huh? I was not raised with Tumblr. This okay. explains it. Well, there's one that's like you would insert different quiche. character names as one of them being like, hey, I've got uh, – you want to go have a quickie in the kitchen and the other one is like i believe it's pronounced quiche and i think about that every time <laughs> somebody really- says either quickie or quiche that's where my brain immediately goes which is unfortunate because i love quiche i do too i also love soufflés mm. i love eggs mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god we need to end the recording well because you, you had deviled eggs last time and i feel like yeah. felt a real connection over the deviled eggs because they're right, delicious munch munch <laughs> Munch, munch like a little hedgehog. Like when they're munching on parsley, and he's like, "She's hungry. Stop." Okay, we need to wrap this up. Yes, you have listened to an extremely long roundabout episode of "Tempt Me at Twilight" by Lisa Claypas. You deserve well, a cookie. It was an episode of Romance Your DBR about <laughs> "Tempt Me at Twilight." You didn't listen to an episode of. <laughs> I don't know what I said. And this has been Tempt Me at Twilight. <laughs> this is the d- direct text. We just read it to you. <laughs> yes. The end. Mark it as read on Goodreads. In exactly two minutes and 47 seconds. <laughs> Stop. Leo had located his arch enemy. We've quoted it a few times. We got the um, the the a man who can charm a hedgehog and understands mm-hmm. jokes about Greek scholars quote, and mm-hmm. we got Leo finding his arch enemy. God, so you've basically read the audiobook now. You have, you have. Um, yeah, not much else. Uh, hope you enjoyed that. Our what you call it? Um, married by morning. That's it. Is not on the third, but the tenth. So, so not March. next Friday, but the Friday after. Yes. When you're listening to this. And truthfully, I have no clue what next Friday is, so. Um, who's to say? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, well, I think we have to decide, actually. Yeah, because oh. originally one thing, because the strike ended. Yes. Oh, fuck. I have cords everywhere. Um, yeah, the HarperCollins strike is now concluded. They got a fair contract. Ooh. Uh, they got some pretty banging, um, like, yeah, with terms or whatever in the contract like it seems very good for them so happy so now we can be reading things again we can um, be reading. i'm excited for saint patrick's day now our like lucky book scope has extended beyond christina britain yes yes it has so yay expand that a bit um we'll see what next week's episode is the world is our know. oyster it really is. And we'll have a TBR Tuesday, which will be girthy. Uh-huh. Because we've read a lot and Valentine's Day happened. 
and we couldn't talk about books there. So yeah, we'll try to limit ourselves to recommendations only, but um, mm-hmm. make no promises on it being not unhinged in length. Yeah, I mean we can we can promise unhinged in length at this moment in time because that's looking true. at the looking at the timestamp of this episode where we were talking about one book. Well, to be fair, <laughs> there's some things to be cut out. Oh, there are. That's why I'm not listening the exact time to yeah. out ourselves, but like. Doubt ourselves. <laughs> it in our exists. defense, here's the thing. When the podcast was born, we've talked about this before, but our friend Kylie was like te- DMing me and mm-hmm. she was like, if you and Hannah ever just did a podcast of like literally just you guys talking about the most bonkers historical romances <laughs> you've read, I would listen. And then I immediately DM'd you and mm-hmm. was like, hey, Kylie just said this. And you were like, I'm buying a microphone right now, <laughs> essentially was how that conversation went. There was like a little bit more debate somewhere in there, but it was essentially it really wasn't. a pretty straight through line to you being it, like, should we? And I was like, should we? And then we did. Um, it it truly was like, you were like, it's kind of like that that uh, gif where he's like laughing, but then like does the side eye. Yeah. Like it's like a joke, but also like serious. <laughs> yeah. And um, like- I had a Target gift card in a dream, and I and got I stole this and microphone. She already, sister. yeah, she already had one, and they're the same microphone. So, like, look at us, look at us. Hey, look at us. <laughs> um, Who would have thought? See, dang, I really do wish you could put gifts in podcasts. Somehow. I know. There's my personal grievance at this moment in time is that Apple Podcasts, like Faded Mates, is able to change um, their ep- like. They can do like chap. You can do chapters in Apple Podcasts, and like with each chapter, they can like change the cover artwork. Team. But I don't know what editing they use. Like I don't know oh, what don't software know. because the one that I use, you're technically able to do that. Like I can add images in, but they don't work. Like our Valentine's episode doesn't have the Valentine's cover on Apple, but on Spotify it does. And like, and I don't know. I don't know how to change it. I've googled. Uh, I, I I don't know. Um, it's beyond my control at this point. Um, so if anyone knows. I'm receptive. Well, at any rate, my point was this podcast was born out of somebody being like, you guys have the most unhinged conversations about the most unhinged books. I would love to just listen to that. And I was like, yeah, we can just record ourselves (laughs) being insane. (sighs) So really, if you've listened this far, you knew what you were getting in. You You really knew. knew. And I hope you've enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Because we really enjoyed this book. And we really enjoy country music. And we really enjoy imagining every hero running the way that George Clooney runs in that one scene. Yeah. And dare I say, we really enjoy a capitalist hero. <laughs> we do. Maybe don't quote us on that. but No, like, don't. It, if he's I was going to say also we enjoy getting dicked down in Dallas, but um, I don't know that. I mean, neither of us have ever been dicked down in Dallas. No, I've never been to Dallas. I've never been to Texas. That's a, That's a bummer. It is. Um, one for the bingo card, guys. One for the bingo card. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. The end. Uh, yeah. We um, need to be done. Sleep. <laughs> oh, for real. <laughs>